deliberately asked a question uh, of the three people any appreciation of how the Irish public had responded uh, to their presence here and to the uh, rigours of the bailout deal. Uh, and uh, Klaus um, uh, answered the question in the following way. The attitude, uh, as far as I can see or, or, or judge, and this is of course only, I have only a limited perspective, uh, is, 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 is very good. I'm, I'm impressed by, by the depth of the discussion in Ireland and the understanding of uh, econ complex economic financial sector issues which, the, which is revealed by looking into the Irish press, looking into the discussion. Uh, uh, but also when, when I come from the airport with a taxi driver, uh, they are often uh, very well informed, I must say, very well informed. So uh, I think that is a good sign that, that here we have an open discussion. Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult adjustment process, uh, but there is an open debate and there's a debate where economic arguments play, play an important role. And I think that is uh, how it should be. I thought I'd ask him a little more about his conversations with the taxi driver. Let's have a look. Um, Klaus uh, Manish, uh, did your taxi driver uh, tell you how the Irish people are bewildered that we are required to pay unguaranteed bondholders billions of euros for debts that the Irish people have no uh, relation to or no bearing with, it's primarily to bail out or to ensure the solvency of European banks? And if your taxi driver asked you that question, or if the tr taxi driver had asked you that question, what would have, would have been your response? That's my first question. Um, uh, well, well, can we take, it, we take, the, take a couple together? Can you ask the second question? Uh, well, my second question is a completely different issue, and okay. I may have a follow through if M Mr. Right. Uh, well, Masters doesn't answer the question in a way yeah. that uh, well, hang on. would illuminate the taxi driver's understanding of all this. I would have a follow through question. Right. Can I ask you then to pass the mic and we come well, back for, to you for the second question? Yeah, well, if you don't mind, uh, that's a way of, uh, of uh, breaking up the exchange. Uh, and I would prefer if it went this way. We have a tradition in Irish journalism that we pursue issues and that when somebody doesn't ask a question, we uh, follow through on it. And I hope that tradition will be respected uh, at this, on this occasion. So could you ask, ask the question, answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Vincent, uh, I I have answered a very similar question of you. I think it was two reviews ago. Uh, and you addressed the question. You addressed the question previously. I addressed yeah. the question. Yes. I answered it. I would say uh, I can I can understand uh, that uh, I mean, this is a difficult decision to be made by the government, and there's no doubt about it. But there are different aspects of the problem to be to be balanced against each other, and I can understand that the government came to the came to the view that all in all the costs for the for the uh, Irish people for the for the stability of the banking system for the confidence in the banking system of, of taking a certain action in this respect uh, which you were mentioning uh, could could likely have been much bigger than the benefits for the taxpayer uh, which of course would have been there so the, the financial sector would have been affected the confidence of the financial sector would have been negatively affected and I can understand that there were that there was a difficult decision but uh, that the decision was taken in this direction. Yeah, that, that, well, that doesn't address the issue. We are required to pay in respect of a defunct bank. There's no uh, bearing on the welfare of the Irish people at all. We are required to pay in respect of this defunct bank billions on unguaranteed bonds in order to ensure the health of European banks. Now, what would you explain, how would you explain that uh, situation to the tax, uh, taxi driver that you talked about earlier? I think I have addressed okay. the question. You no, know, you haven't addressed the question because you've referred to the, uh, the viability of the Irish financial institutions. This financial institution I'm talking about is defunct. It's over, it's finished. Now, why are the Irish people required, under threat from the ECB, why are the Irish people required to pay billions to unguaranteed bondholders under threat to the ECB? You didn't answer the question the last time, so maybe you'd answer it this time. 
the Well, I think I think he doesn't have anything to add to what he's already said. Well, well, sorry, well, just we, just we know, this know, isn't good. This isn't this good is, enough. Sorry, this isn't good me. enough. You people are intervening in, in in this society, causing huge damage by requiring us to make payments not for the benefit of anybody in Ireland, but for the benefit of European financial institutions. Now, could you explain why the Irish people are inflicted with this burden? Well, I think I have a first question. You have nothing to say. There's no answer. Is that right? Is that it? No answer? I have given an answer. He's given an answer. You have a, given an answer that doesn't address the question. That's your view. That is my view, and I think it yeah. would be the view of the taxi driver and the view of our viewers tonight. Right. Can we please move on?